We're having so much fun, we've decided to do three weeks in a row with Mr. John <laughs> Bettis for the story behind the song. And you know what? Your compositions deserve it. You're part of America's culture. Oh, thank you. Your music has touched every moment in lives for generations and will for hundreds of years to come. And it kind of started, you get out of college, you're in a band with a couple people, let me see who they were, Karen and Richard Carpenter. <laughs> yeah, I remember them. Yeah. I remember them, yeah. So, uh, go back to that origin. Oh, well, it, that was my garage band. The Carpenters were my garage band. Um, I'd been banging around the folk circuit in a duo for a while, and... Um, we were driving to college together one day, me and the guy I was in the duo with, and we heard Sound of Silence on the radio. And I swear to God, we heard that and we looked at each other. We knew we'd never be that good. <laughs> so we broke up right then. <laughs> that minute. <laughs> and so uh, he went off and started a group called the Sunshine Company. And I went off to a different college. And I joined the choir there. And I still was going into show business, I knew that. And uh, so they let me in the choir just for, for the humor of it, I think, because I, I, didn't, I didn't belong in that choir. I wasn't musically trained enough. But the choir director approached me about doing a, um, a solo thing with the choir because I was a performer. And I was scared to do it, so I kept putting it off. And I eventually tried to get out every way I could. And the day before it was due, I said, well, I won't do it unless I can write it. And the... He said yes. <laughs> I almost said a dirty word on the website. Uh, and so uh, I wrote, I figured this will get me out of it, so I wrote a song called Acapella Music that, that ridiculed everything about being in a choir. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, went over funny. And so I had to rehearse a 45, 46 voice choir with just me and a guitar. I, my, I had a D18 at the time, as a matter of fact. And... Um, and so Richard Carpenter, I'd known him slightly from re from choir practice, stood up and said, can I help you play that? And he was a shredder. And I said, yeah, you can. And during the process of that, Richard approached me. We got to know each other and talked about girls and cars and stuff. And this school is where? Long Beach State Long College. Beach State, right. Cal State at Long Beach. And uh, he asked me at one point, he said, look, I've got a sister who sings great and plays drums. And let's put a group together, the three of us. And we'll, we'll get some other people from the music department here and make a band. And I went, you know, I felt like doing something else. So I said, sure. And that was the beginning. And so for two years, that's what we were. Well, I've got to ask you, first time you heard Karen sing a song. Exactly like, <laughs> it was like a movie. It was, she sang that way when she was 16, because that's when I met her, she was 16. She sang that way when she was 16. She gained some uh, breath control. She gained, gained some uh, taste she would she she could control it better but in terms of just the instrument itself no man it was that okay wow now do, did i appreciate it the way i ought to have probably not <laughs> i was i was it was all about me wasn't it <laughs> it was all about me and richard it was richard, about richard was about he was richard. in there yeah, he was yeah. in there and we had the guts to sing lead for a while <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And you'd heard Sound of Silence? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't get the memo, man. I didn't get the memo. So that leads to, name some of the Carpenter hits that we all know. Well, Richard and I wrote 38 of the songs they recorded. Wow. And the, the big ones were Goodbye to Love, uh, Yesterday Once More, Only Yesterday, I Need to Be in Love, and then Top of the World, of course. Which... Lynn and everybody else, yeah. you know. But let's yeah. let's talk about yesterday once more. Just oh, okay. I remember the first time I heard that on the radio. I I don't know who produced the record, but she comes in almost cold, and then there's that groove and just. Well, that's and all. Richard. Sonically, sonically, oh, yeah. whoever produced that thing on the little AM speaker, it was magic. Well, that was Richie. I mean, Richard produced every record they ever did, produced and arranged, and in that case, he wrote it. So the, that, that's underappreciated, and I'm going to take just a moment. It's not really on a songwriter point of view. But we forget, because there's been so much time in between, how much recording um, style Richard invented. The very first electric guitar solo on a pop ballad was Goodbye to Love. We now just take it for granted. It's cliche now. Yeah. We actually got hate mail because of it. We did. 
<laughs> People going, how could you do that? Uh, well, Richard did anyway. But no, Richard, the double reed oboe, the kind of taste he had in how he lovingly placed his sister and inside perfect an arrangement. Room. Yes, and he was, and it, and he never wrote them down ahead of time. They were all really? finished in his head. They, it was the yeah. Brian Wilson. Yeah, yeah, it was Brian Wilson. He could hear the whole record before it was done. And this guy Ron Goro, who used to be our, his copyist, used to come over a day or two before the sessions. And poor little Ron, because Richard would just sit there at the piano and sing him the parts, and he'd say French horns, and he'd sing him the part and run. Oh. And then he'd go, oboe. And then, well, this is the wrong order, but Richard would always start with the kick and the bass drum, the boom, 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 boom. Um, but yeah, that's the way that they got, they were all done in his head. Um, Do you remember the riding of yesterday once more? Distinctly. Okay. Let's talk about it. Richard and Karen were on the road a lot. This was... They they were all, we'd had like six number one records or something in a row. I didn't write those, but they had had I, we'd had goodbye to love. Um, and Richard was, had no time to find any material, and and so he was going to do one side of an album as oldies, but he knew he couldn't get away with that without an original song to hang it all together. Mm -hmm. So he called me and he said that's what he was going to do, and he said we really got to have an anthem. I remember that, and that's the theme. Okay, it's the theme yeah, to that side of the yeah. record, and this is when Greece was getting yeah. the Tony. This is when American Graffiti had just been out, so it made some commercial sense. It was also easy because the songs were already written, <laughs> so he could just arrange right. them. So he said, "You got to get me some titles." I said, "Really?" I haven't even. He said, "Well, you've seen the medley. You know what it is." I said, "Okay." So I wrote maybe five pages of titles, just handwritten. There must have been seventy of them, and I got them over to Richard's house, and he never said anything to me. I didn't know which one he took, if any. And so I went over there, and we had two or three days to write, and so I showed up in his piano room, and I saw this my sheets of paper all over the floor, and I'm you know. Of course, I'm walking in and going, what the, which did he choose? Because <laughs> some of them weren't that easy to write. And I saw this circle, and I went over there, and I saw it, it was yesterday once more, and I went, he picked that one. Because I almost didn't write that one down. I just thought it was too literary. I didn't think okay. anybody would get it. So um, he, I said, did you pick that one? He said, oh, yeah. He said, I've, I, I've almost got something to do with the chorus done. And I said, Really? And so he walked over and he said, something like, Every shalom, every wo, wo. And it says, like that, but there'll be more like that. And I said, really? Okay. So we fleshed that out and then got to where yesterday once more would work. Because Richard and I kind of work. Richard's got it sonically in his head what he wants it to be. But he specifies the melody more as we go. So he's got that whole chorus specified out, got to the yesterday once more section. And then... Uh, we couldn't figure out how to write the verses. He kind of had the music ready. But um, were we going to do one of those rock and roll heaven things and refer to old right, records? Right. Were we going to refer to artists like Buddy Holly and mm -hmm. such like? Were we not? And we wasted four or five days doing that. And I remember Karen no, came... No, you didn't. No, four or five hours, but, I mean. But you didn't because you made the right choice. Well, that's true. That We didn't waste the time, you're right. But Karen came in at one point from shopping because she was always checking on us. She wouldn't bother us, but she'd check on us to make sure we weren't just <laughs> fooling around. <laughs> and so she came in and she said, what do you got for me? <laughs> I went, well, it's not done. It's not. So we played her the chorus, and she, would, of course, loved it. And then we told her um, what we were working on, we're going to try to do the verses. She said, no, I hate that. <laughs> it's one of the only comments she ever made. Really? Is she really didn't want it to be the names of things and stuff. So I said, fine. So then Richard and I had... Over the years, Cheryl. Well, then you did waste your time, and Karen <laughs> yes, pulled you back in the right direction. Well, that's what she always did. <laughs> Karen, and Karen would always force us to write, too. It was like, she would, she would, because it was for her. It was like, no, I need songs. Said, yeah, but we're having such a good time <laughs> not writing songs. Um, and so we got it finished, and um, then she came back in and sang it. It's one of those moments you live for, because she was so comfortable with us. And Richard could play so well that you could feel the arrangement. It's one of those you don't get m much. Because Karen's standing in the arc of the piano, and I'm leaning here, and Richard's playing there. And the record just kind of bloomed right in front of me. And it was never any better than that, and the record really wasn't that much different. 
it, of course it's arranged and stuff, but it was, it, uh, I can hear it as clear as day to this day. Especially in the verses, it's, it's a pocket for that voice. Oh, yeah, and he would, he tailored his mouth. When I was young, he always made the most out of that deep, open-throated alto that she had. Because right. she had three and a half octaves oh, yeah. without working at it. So he always designed melodies that would showcase her the right way. And boy, when she digs into those low tones. It's like when people talk to me about... Because Karen really plays with the, um, the intonation of a thing, too. If you just sit down and listen to when Karen... She's like a sax player. She'll hit a note, and then she'll slide on it, and then she'll head to the next one. But it's not because she doesn't know what she's doing. It's because she knows that emotionally that's the way to get to that note. Or she, and she, she doesn't slide in much because that's kind of an amateur move. All right. The pro move is to hit the intonation and, and you know slide what? She away doesn't from have it. To. <laughs> no. Grab that guitar. And I just want All to right. say it's been a genuine pleasure. You are... America's better for your music. Oh, it is. I hope the world is. It would you know, have been. I, I jokingly quote: "We we've done a lot of advocacy work together. Yes, in we these have. Difficult times Thank for God. copyrights, but they play a song at your funeral. They play a song at your wedding, and some of your songs, I'm sure, were involved in people's conception, John. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, at one point, we used to say about the Carpenters, we were responsible for more bad marriages than any act in history. <laughs> well, it's been a genuine pleasure to do three parts with you here three consecutive weeks it's in pleasure. the Tennessee. And the story behind the song this week, the fantastic John Bettis, and yesterday once more. I was young, I'd listen to the radio, waiting for my favorite songs. When they played, I'd sing along, it made me smile. 